Welcome to the Recover Me podcast with Warren Willie, doctor of osteopathic medicine, a best-selling author, and leading expert on holistic, healthy living. Warren is your guide to living a naturally healthier, happier life. So much of Western medicine, popular diets, and fitness fads put a bandage over health problems, addressing symptoms and not causes offering short-term results at the expense of long-term health. That's why Warren is a man on a mission, to question the status quo and uncover holistic health solutions you can use in your life, starting right now. Now to get us started today, here's Warren. Well, hello, Warren Willie here, again with the Recover Me podcast. Recover Me is the medicine that meets you where you are. Remember, we can't change your stressors but we can certainly help your body and mind deal with them better. That's the recover me philosophy. Looking at life, not through skewered eyes, but with open eyes and really trying to understand what's the best thing for me as an individual to keep me healthy. We really focus on individual based studies, the study of one, the N of one, if you will, versus population based studies that give you some general ideas on how to treat numbers, but totally miss the boat when it comes to you. So, Today's podcast is going to be short because it's kind of an introduction to some rather lengthy ones that I've already recorded, but we're doing this one out first because I want to clarify some stuff. It seems that ketogenic diets are so popular now that I can't keep up with the emails I'm getting about ketogenic supplements, the importance of ketosis, Facebook seems to be covered with all these wonderful weight loss uh, before and after pictures when people are doing ketogenic diets. And in general, again, these are nothing new, and I cover this in great detail in a podcast called Ketosis. Um, their ketosis, ketogenic diets have been around since the 1800s. We knew about them treating childhood epilepsy disorders for years. I have a diet book dated 1901 that talks about low carb dieting. Uh, and the importance and how to help you. So it's not necessarily a new thing. It comes in fads. There's a lot of research on it. And But what it does bring up and what I do hear way too much of, and that is carbohydrates are bad. And that's a problem because anytime anyone outlaws or criminalizes a macronutrient, we have issues. Now, the American Dietetics Association and all of our wonderful RDs out there, they're awesome, they do good for people, but really their training, they've been taught to criminalize fat and to keep protein minimum and really focus on carbohydrates. So I thought we'd do a brief and quick little podcast on are carbohydrates bad? Are they? Are they needed for energy? Are they the cause of fatness out there? And then we're going to answer a very important question at the end, and that is, are they the best tasting macronutrient? So we'll cover that in some detail in a minute here. But why don't we dive into understanding are carbohydrates bad? Well, first, we need a little history behind that. It seems that carbohydrates are the center of the world for the standard dietetic people out there. Their diets are, if you look at the old food pyramid or now the food plate or all these ridiculous symbols on how much and what you should eat, it's all based on agricultural based financing in Washington. And that is the majority of your food should be carbohydrate based. That is a money issue, not necessarily a physiological issue. This is back to why I mentioned earlier, these broad based uh, public uh, recommendations do not necessarily apply to you. I tell people all the time when they read a study, hey, doc, this says this could be bad for me. I, the first thing I ask them, were you in that study? Did they account for genetics in that study? Did they account for your activity level? Did they account for your stressors? Did they account for your emotions? Did they account for your physical well-being? Did they account for your mental health? Did they account for the rotten day you had at work because your boss is a jerk? No. So you got to look at this, and this is the whole purpose of the Recover Me Medicine philosophy is how does this affect me? What do I do? Do I need 55 to 60% of my diet to be carbohydrate based? There's interesting, and I won't get into great detail on this because again, I cover it in more in other podcasts, but if you look at a lot of the nutritional research pre-World War II, they were really focusing on macronutrients. They weren't focusing on fat loss and fat being the bad guy. Fat didn't get criminalized until the 60s and 70s starting by uh, one guy named Ansel Keys. He was an MD that published the Six Country 
followed by the seven country study. And really, really, that was the start of fat causing heart disease and all these other problems. It was terrible studies. They would never pass today's mustard. Uh, but they really did a lot to criminalize fat and put carbohydrates. At the same time, in the 50s and 60s, we had the ag industry really growing and becoming a powerful money-based influence in Washington. And we're starting to push out fat bad, carbs good, have more carbohydrates, have less fat, and you won't have heart disease and you won't get fat. Well, we know by the mid 70s when they were using high fructose corn syrup due to a number of sugar tariffs, fat had been officially criminalized by then. Look at our obesity curve in America. It's skyrocketed. Now, I'm not blaming it just on carbohydrates or that. I'm just telling you why some people are so convinced that carbohydrates are bad. They're not, and we're gonna talk about that. There's no such thing as a bad food. There's no such thing as a bad macronutrient. There's just bad diets. There's bad lifestyles, and there's bad stressors, and there's bad hormonal responses to food based on the individual. There's so many variables involved that just blaming a macronutrient is not only not very scientific, but it's flat out stupid. So we shouldn't do that. So carbohydrates were really professed and pushed forward back in those time frames. Now, let's talk about the macronutrients real quick. Let's talk about essential versus non-essential and then bring in semi-essential, which is so important. An essential nutrient is a nutrient you need for survival, okay? You need protein to survive. You need fat to survive. You can live without carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are not an essential nutrient, and that doesn't make them bad. Your body doesn't need them. It can make sugar out of protein sources. It's a process called gluconeogenesis. Gluco for sugar, glucose. Neo, new, genesis, the production of from a non-original source. So gluconeogenesis takes protein, turns into sugar, feeds the brain, feeds the kidneys, feeds the red blood cells. Those are the three organs that absolutely have to have sugar. And you're okay. You don't need carbohydrates. There's plenty of uh, uh, historical documents as well as uh, communities throughout the world that had no carbohydrates. They ate, uh, I like to think of the Alaskans, I think they're their Intuit Indians. Uh, forgive me if I said that wrong or I got the wrong name there, but they lived on whale and seal blubber and meat and were fine, healthy, no heart disease, hardly any cancers, lean, mean fighting machines until McDonald's came in. We won't go down that road, but fat and protein are essential. Carbs are not essential. Now, I could argue carbs may be essential as long as protein requirements aren't met. But if you're eating adequate protein, that's why we start in the Recover Me philosophy when we help people develop eating plans. We start with, okay, how much protein do you need? Then we go to, okay, what's your activity level so we can determine carbohydrates? And then the rest we put in fat as fat. So carbohydrates are semi-essential. So you don't need them to survive, but they certainly improve your quality of life if you're doing various activities, which we'll cover in a minute here. Uh, let me cover just some of the popular diets out there as to how many grams of carbohydrates they suggest. And I always use grams. I'm not a big percentage guy. And that's not because uh, percentages tick me off when I'm helping my sixth grader do his math homework. It's because it's harder to understand. If you really look, if I tell you to do a 70%, if I'm telling you to do a ketogenic diet, for example, and I tell you to do 70 to 80% fat and 20 to 30% protein, that really doesn't tell you much. Oh, well, it doesn't tell you enough. So I use grams. So talking in terms of grams, a ketogenic diet has less than 0 0.5 grams per pound or one gram per kilogram recommended. That's a rough estimate. For a moderate uh, or what we call a low carb diet, not a ketogenic diet, but a low carb diet, we may be at one gram of carbohydrates per pound or two grams per kilogram. For a typical diet, the typical Western RD, RDA suggested diet, they're at two to three grams per pound or up to four grams per kilogram of carbohydrates a day. An endurance athlete, which is someone who needs carbohydrates, as they are definitely a population where carbohydrates are semi-essential, need anywhere between three to four grams per pound or six to eight 
grams per kilogram. And then in uh, activities like carbohydrate loading, like I discussed in my book, Better in Steroids, when we're doing uh, dietary supercompensations, we may get as high as five to eight grams per pound or 10 to 16 grams per kilogram of carbohydrates during that short term. So again, carbohydrates aren't bad, they're utilized, and those are the different diet percentages. There's question, well, then how do we determine how many carbohydrates do we need now that we uh, can be in agreement they're not bad? Well, early studies show that as little as 15 grams of carbohydrates a day can limit nitrogen loss, and that's utilization of your biceps for energy for your brain. So just a little bit of carbohydrates keeps sugar high enough to where the body's not going to tear down your muscle to make sugar. Now, everyone's a little different there. Rising carbohydrate intake to around 50 to 100 grams really limits the body's use of amino acids for gluconeogenesis, or, or like I like to tell people, bicep food for your brain. That limits it by going a little higher. And that occurs via two mechanisms. One, the increased carb intake maintains blood sugar and, and keeps insulin at a slightly higher level, thereby suppressing cortisol. Now remember, insulin, I talk about this a lot in, in Better in Steroids, cortisol, your breakdown or what we call catabolic hormone when you're hungry is high or you're stressed or it's high or you're exercising too hard is high and insulin combats that so having a good pre-workout meal keeping sugars at least somewhat present throughout the day will inhibit cortisol they're antagonistic they're like on a teeter-totter if cortisol is too high insulin's low if insulin gets higher cortisol comes down so that's very important the other thing that small amount of carbohydrates in the diet provides glucose for the brain, limiting the body's need to break down protein. So remember, I've talked about this before. Basically, the entire job of your neck down is to keep the neck up alive. And so the brain, if it starts to get hungry, if it needs nutrients, it will start breaking the neck down, down. It's going to survive. That's its job. So very important. Now, so people bring up the fact, okay, I'm not going to have carbohydrates because I think they're bad. I'm a ketogenic diet. You want ketogenesis, don't you? Well, studies show that in some people, and I can tell you this doing 35 years of writing diets for people, that if I can keep them around 100 grams of carbohydrates a day, they can still get a little ketotic. Now, they won't necessarily be able to test that with a urine strip or a lot of the modalities out there. Possibly the breathalyzer, you could do it, and a blood test, definitely, I can show if you're in ketosis or not. But your over-the-counter ketogenic strips that you pee on probably aren't going to be activated if you're eating at least uh, 50 to 100 grams of carbohydrates a day. Uh, and that's important. Now, but I bring that up for a couple reasons, back to cars being good or bad. If you've tried a ketogenic diet, you may have lost weight or not. There's always a huge water shift when you cut out carbs. But if you feel like dog poo poo doing no carbohydrate diets, then you probably have an insulin sensitivity issue. Some people do wonderful on ketogenic diets and feel great. Some people do horrible on them. There's actually genetic testing we can look at. Are you a better carbohydrate metabolizer or are you a better fat metabolizer? But really, you don't need to spend your money. You know it. If you are someone who feels awful on low-carb diets, you probably have very good insulin sensitivity. So you need them. If you're insulin resistant or have what we call a hyperinsulin secretion phenomenon or any insulin-related illness, polycystic ovarian syndrome, diabetes, any of those, you probably do okay and feel okay on a low-carb diet. Again, back to the whole Recover Me philosophy of it's an individual thing. It's not, it shouldn't be based on population studies. It should be done on the individual. How do you feel? So just to repeat that one more time, if you do well on low-carb diets, you probably have an insulin issue. If you feel like dog poo poo, those that is an official medical term, you can look it up on a low carb diet, then you probably are super insulin sensitive and you need your carbohydrates. So simple way to determine how to do that. Now, energy is another issue. I take carbohydrates due to energy. So I, I'm not showing this on my screen, but I want you to picture a graph. So on the, on the bottom line, we have time. On our, on our uh, y-axis, we have the amount of energy needed. If you look at a time thing, our body uses ATP, adenosine triphosphate, immediately, one to two seconds worth. That's where our energy comes from. 
Over about two or three seconds, we use the ATP PC system. So that's why people take creatine. That's why creatine in studies has shown, the supplement creatine has been shown to help sprinters and people that do fast activity like power lifters uh, or, or Olympic lifters, that burst activity, creatine tends to help that because that expends, extends the energy pathways. After that, we have our lacid activase system, which takes, which our body actually utilizes up to one minute. And that's lactic acid we've always been told is bad. That's what causes your muscles to burn when you're working out hard. Yes, but your body's also using that lactic acid as an energy source for up to one minute during exercise. And then over time, we slip into the aerobic system where our body starts or turns to oxygen for energy. So that's the basic pathways of energy if we're looking at on a graph and this is where carbohydrates come in because now we're going to talk about the semi-essential need of carbohydrates and that particularly comes up with exercise remember i talked about the way we ideally write a person's eating plan is start with what's your protein requirements based on you your disease state what you do in life all those things your age your lean mass all those things then what's your activity level? And based on that, I'm gonna help you determine the amount of carbs and the remainder is gonna be fat. That's how an ideal eating plan is written. So if you're doing low intensity aerobic cardiovascular work, in other words, you're someone that goes to the gym and walks on the treadmill and watches Oprah in the afternoon, then you really don't need that much any carbohydrates. You can do that quite well without that. That's not needed. And if you feel okay on a low carb diet and that's the type of exercise you do, you probably should keep your carbs low. For weight training, you may need a little more. Carb requirements are still actually quite small. Uh, years and years was I, when I was staying in ketosis, just kind of as an experiment, and I feel pretty good with it. Uh, I would train heavy and hard with zero sugar in my body and did fine. Now, so there's some out there that say you need anywhere between five to seven grams per kilogram or two to three grams per uh, pound of carbohydrates for exercise. And giving a rough calculation, that's roughly one set of, let's say, 20 bench presses uh, to failure requires roughly five grams of carbohydrates to replenish that glycogen store. There's a number of calculations out there you can do if you're super anal and like it, or you just enjoy math, that's fine. But carbohydrates can be utilized in weightlifting and exercise, but not essential. But now we get into our endurance, excuse me, our endurance athletes, people that like to do more intense activity, our crossfitters, which I would put in that term, uh, our runners, our marathoners, our triathletes, our swimmers, our bicyclists. Those are people where carbohydrates are needed. That's what we call the semi-essential carbohydrate needs. They're not bad guys. It's a balance. You need to be able to provide the energy to exercise adequately and survive exercise. And then most importantly, recover from exercise. Remember that word recovery is so important and carbohydrates are a part of that. Don't limit carbohydrates because you think they're going to make you fat. They don't. There's a bigger picture there. It's not just calories. It's not just carbohydrates. You cannot outlaw a macronutrient and expect to do it long term. You just can't do it. It's not realistic. You have to accept all food is good. Different sources are better than others. But in the big picture, how is your body responding to this food? That's what you want to look at and understand. So let's review. Are carbohydrates bad? No, they're not. They may not be essential in your particular livelihood, but they're certainly not bad. It's a balance and understanding where are you. And that's why in the Recover Me philosophy, that's the first thing we do. Where are you right now? And how can we optimize that? I can't change your stressors. We're just going to make your body and mind optimal with what you're dealing with. And carbohydrates are a part of that. Are carbohydrates needed for energy? Absolutely. As I just described and said a couple times, based on your activity level, whether you're a desk jockey or you're a construction worker, your carbohydrate requirements are different. And understanding that and understanding your response to carbohydrates. What is your insulin sensitivity? Are your other hormones balanced? Is your thyroid working? In men, is your testosterone level adequate? In women, are you still menstruating and have normal hormonal cycles? All those play a role in your overall energy, health, and well-being. You can't just look at a macronutrient, throw it out the door. You can't just cut calories to nothing. You can't over-exercise and not have any carbs in your system. It just doesn't work. It's a bigger picture. So carbohydrates are semi-essential for energy based on your activity level. 
are carbohydrates the cause of fatness? Absolutely not. That is a myth professed by the ketogenic uh, uh, preachers out there. In certain people, people do wonderful on ketogenic diets. I just wish that all of these before and after pictures extended for years, not months. Right now, our, my local gym's doing the Biggest Loser plan. No comment. If you're listening to this, my eyes just rolled to the back of my head. This is a short-term plan. Your picture when you start and a picture 12 weeks later mean nothing. I tell you what, the winner should be, the winner should have their picture taken in June, in September, and next January. And if they're still, and if they've maintained, even for one year, that's not nearly a lifetime, but if they can maintain it for one year, then I'd give them a prize. Give them a prize at 12 weeks, that's absolutely useless, means nothing. Right, so are carbohydrates the cause of fatness? Absolutely not. That is silly to think so. And finally, to end this short, brief uh, podcast on carbohydrates, the question I brought up at the beginning, are carbohydrates the best tasting food out there? I would have to unanimously say most likely yes, especially when it's mixed with fat and deep fried like a donut. Now, who doesn't love donuts? That is part of the Recover Me philosophy. You not hear some purported health professional, such as myself, telling you that donuts are awesome and taste good. I'm telling you that because, one, I'm not going to lie to you. Everyone likes a donut. Number two, if you live the big picture, if you live the Recover Me philosophy of health and well-being and optimal living, having a donut here and there doesn't hurt you. That's the point of recover me is you have to live life it's a bigger picture carbs aren't bad they just might not be the best thing for you at your current stage in life that's why it's sitting with a professional that understands that sitting with someone getting some help and understanding the big picture so you can enjoy every day and have the longevity to enjoy your grandchildren and their children that's what we're after. I think that's what we're all after. And that's looking at a big picture. So the first thing to do is don't criminalize any macronutrients. American Dietetics Association, shame on you for uh, um, criminalizing fat. Ketogenic people, shame on you for criminalizing carbohydrates. It's an individual thing and it should be individual. And that's the whole recovery me philosophy. So enough preaching, go have a donut. Maybe I shouldn't record that. I should take that off. But anyway, you get my idea. Until next time, remember, recover me. Meet you where you are. We can't change your stressors. We can just help your body, mind, spirit, and soul deal with them better. Until next time, take care. Thank you for joining Warren on the Recover Me podcast with Warren Willie, your guide to living a naturally healthier, happier life. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, or wherever you find your best podcasts. To connect with Warren and the community, learn more about naturally healthy living, and claim a free resource to improve your health right away, visit drwilly.com. You'll find all of Dr. Willie's resources there, including best-selling books like Better Than Steroids, The Z Diet, What Does Your Doctor Look Like Naked, and his latest book, obtainable. Enjoy the body and energy you've always wanted beyond diet and exercise. That's drwilly.com, D-R-W-I-L-L-E-Y.com. And until next time with Warren, get fit, be healthy, live life.